Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I am just another tinfoil hat. Welcome to my show. Today we are going to be discussing probably one of the first cases of high strangeness which I heard when I was a kid, and that is the Nodolf incident. Now, the Nodolf incident occurred in southwestern Wisconsin near Platteville, which is where my family's from, hence why I heard it when I was so young. My grandma literally told me the story when I was like four or five. So, yeah. And it's still pretty well known in the area, kind of tossed around as a local legend. Um, so the story goes that in the 1880s there was a farmer named Carl Nodolf, his wife Louise, and their two kids, Minnie Louise, who was four, and Louie, who was two. They lived in a two-story stone house on the side of the Platte Mound, and the house is still standing today, actually, and it's in pretty good shape. It's on private property, but I did manage to snap some photos, so... Yeah, I was surprised. It's, like, in really good shape. I mean, it looks creepy, but, you know, pretty awesome. But anyway, today the Platte Mound is probably best known for the Big M, which, if you can believe it, strap on your seatbelts for this one, is a Big M, constructed out of whitewashed stone, on the side of the mound. It stands for mining. So anyway, the 1880s, one summer night, there was a massive storm, and Carl and Louise waited it out for some time and then decided it was just time to go to bed and time to turn in for the night. So they barred the doors, shuttered the windows, checked on the kids, and went to sleep. So closer to morning, a massive crack of thunder awakened the two parents, and Louise heard Minnie crying for her. So they go, they check on the kids, kids aren't in their beds. So, oh well, don't freak out. They go downstairs looking around for the kids, figuring they got frightened by the storm, and the kids aren't downstairs. All of a sudden the parents hear both of the kids crying from outside. So here is the really tricky thing about that, is that the doors and windows were all still locked and bolted from the inside, and this is beyond the fact, too, that the kids, who again were aged four and two, couldn't even reach the bolts. So now, Carl and Louise rush outside, and there the kids are out in the storm. So they drag them inside, rush to get them some dry clothes, and then they realize the kids are not wet. The kids are totally dry. It's like they've been out in the rain for who knows how long, and it's like the rain didn't even touch them. So the parents, meanwhile, just running out to get them, got totally soaked. So this is when Carl and Louise kind of freak out. How did you get outside? Why were you outside? What happened? The kids try to tell them and they can't. They have suddenly developed a pronounced stutter. Um, so the Nodolfs would go on to have six more kids, none of whom would have such issues. The Nodolf incident on that strange night, as it's been called in southwestern Wisconsin since its occurrence, kind of remains a puzzler not easily shelved into any mainstream paranormal category. I mean, the disappearance of people in the dead of night from inside their homes, first thing I think of is alien abduction, and especially kids being taken harkens back to the precursor to alien abduction, which is fairy abduction. You know, probably just two different ways of explaining the same phenomenon. The fact that the kids both went through some experience and then came out of it with a stutter is likely evidence of some sort of trauma. Um, and also, too, the fact that Years later, of course, they would learn to talk even with the stutter, and they still couldn't say exactly what happened to them. You know, that's evidence of missing time or some gap in their experience. However, the trick here is that usually the trauma from an alien abduction experience doesn't surface for many years, sometimes never. Ironically enough, if the Nodolf incident could be attributed to this, we might not even know about it. You know, it just would have been something that they didn't remember. So. If it was an alien abduction, that leaves the question, what was it? We're still left with the fact that the kids got out of the house without disturbing any of the exits, were out in the rain for an indeterminate amount of time and didn't get wet, and could never really explain exactly what happened to them or how it happened. So an interesting and rather vague notion involves distortions in our reality, you know, kind of glitches in space and time. Um, the paranormal and actually just, you know, lore in general is filled with accounts of people appearing and disappearing, um, objects too. And so then that begs the question, however, what causes this? You know, personally, I think that as time goes on, um, the true importance of electromagnetism will come to light. And this idea accounts for so much of what we currently consider unexplainable. Paranormal researchers have been discussing it in so many different terms for years. 
you know, ley lines, vile vortices, the devil's graveyards, whatever you want to call it, it's just different phraseology for the idea that there's an undercurrent in our world that causes discrepancies in how we experience it. There are a couple interesting things to note involving this theory, um, the first of which is that a mere 12-ish miles away from the Platte Mound is the town of Aniton, which, according to local lore, disappears and reappears from time to time, and sometimes people just happen to be caught in the in-between, I suppose. Then there's also the tie to one of the biggest names in the High Strangeness Synchronicity name game. The Platte Mound is right inside the boundaries of Lafayette County. And Lafayette is just one of those names or words that is often tied to cases of high strangeness. Um, you know, as human beings, I believe we all kind of desire to have a cohesive experience of a reality that we consider firm and unchangeable. Uh, we seek to understand things in a way that fits into the rationale we've set down, that point A must always proceed to point B and so on. You know, when stuff like the Nodolf incident or any other number of incidents happens, that assumption is challenged, and it is kind of frightening, but it really doesn't need to be. It's simply something that we should seek out and try to understand. You know, with that said, I am just another tinfoil hat. Thanks for watching. Do we?